what next for property prices and the UK property market as we come out of COVID-19 lockdown. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing in property for over 20 years. I've thrived and done some cracking deals in the recessions in the 90s, 1990s and also in the post-2009 credit crunch recession. We are heading for a full-scale recession and a property market recession uh, as we come out of this COVID-19 crisis. But all that is great news for property investors who are in the know. Property investors who change their game will profit from immense opportunity to come. In this video, I'm going to make some predictions of the post-COVID-19 UK economy. I'm going to suggest how this is going to affect the UK property market and property prices. And I'm going to reveal some unique opportunities for property investors to profit. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon because we release new property related content each and every week. And it's all dedicated to helping you stay on top of your game and be a more successful property entrepreneur. Like, it really helps us out on YouTube and comment. Whether you agree or disagree with what I'm saying, leave your comments uh, down, down below. So what next for the property market and house prices in the UK as we come out of the COVID-19 lockdown period? Well, we're heading straight for a recession. Why? Because that's going to be induced largely by the effect that the COVID-19 lockdown has had on the UK job market and on unemployment levels. Of course, unemployment will rise. Of course, businesses are going to take time to return to kind of pre-COVID-19 uh, business activity levels. And until they do, they will not be able to uh, re-employ the same level of uh, staff as they had before the lockdown. The complete lockdown or shutdown of the UK economy and the time it will take to actually recover and bounce back to pre-COVID-19 levels will mean a drop in GDP. Most economists are predicting that's going to be a minimum of 10%. Just to put that GDP drop into some form of perspective, in the recession uh, of 2009, we had a 6% drop in GDP in the UK. In the early 1990s, uh, the drop in GDP was between 2 and 3%. And in the Great Depression of the 1930s, we saw 8% fall in GDP. So this one is going to be big. But the difference with this recession is that everything was fine pre-COVID-19. And with COVID-19, of course, everything dropped off a cliff with complete business inactivity. The big question is how long will it take for businesses and business activity to recover to pre-COVID-19 levels? Many economists are predicting that it will take at least three years to return back to pre-COVID-19 levels. Now, the big indicator for this, um, that the fact that we're coming out of this and things are going to get, get better, is going to be unemployment levels. And that's the indicator to keep our eye on. In previous recessions, when unemployment rises, then property prices tend to fall. Uh, fewer people are interested in buying. Uh, but conversely, more people are interested in renting. But you see, fortunes are made in recessions. In 2009, when we had the Lehman's crash and the credit crunch and, and that kind of thing, we had three years of uh, uh, fallen house prices and golden opportunity. If you had bought property in most areas of the UK in 2009, then it would have taken just 10 years for those property prices to more than double. Savills, the property investment um, consultancy, recently put out an interesting piece of research which said that the best 10 years, the best 10 year period for property in the last 30 years was actually between 2009 and 2013. In other words, if you had bought property in the time period 2009 to 2013, um, you would have received, you'd have benefited from the maximum growth over a 10-year period than in at any time over the last 30 years. And that's quite interesting. So if you had your very own DeLorean equipped with a flux capacitor, the best time 
to go back in time to, to start your property journey, would have been 2009. But guess what? We all don't need a DeLorean and a flux capacitor because history is repeating itself. Great Scott. I believe we've got a two or three year window of opportunity where the events of 2009 to 2013 are going to repeat between 2020 and 2023, after which property prices will boom again, and I'll explain why. It's only a two, three year window of opportunity. Why? Because the job market will be subdued, and that is gonna be the real driver. As soon as the economy starts to pick up and unemployment starts to fall, um, we're gonna see the economy revert back to pre-COVID-19 levels. And that's when we're gonna see a massive spike in house prices. Just like 2009, the government have gone about a massive program of quantitative easing, or as I like to call it, QE, quack economics. If you print money, if you pump a ton of money into the economy, then basically the value of the money in the economy becomes worth less. And if the value of that pound gets worth less, what it has is that it has a natural inflationary effect on assets, on finite assets and hence the phrase, the asset bubble. How much money has been pumped into the economy? Well, in 2009, there was some 200 billion pound pumped into the economy through quantitative easing. Just in March this year, we've had over three times that, 645 billion pound. That is a huge ton of money. So as soon as unemployment starts to fall to pre-COVID-19 levels and the economy starts to bounce back to pre-COVID-19 levels, that's when the house price spike will really kick in and we'll see a repeat of what happened between 2013 to 2017. And this gives the savvy, clued up, knowledgeable property entrepreneur a good three-year window when they can really have some fun and really uh, turbocharge their property investing career. Why? Because the market will be slow. Supply and demand will be in your favour. When the market slows, there aren't so many buyers around and there aren't so many buyers willing to pay top money for properties. When the market slows, when the market slows in pace, that gives the savvy, knowledgeable, clued up entrepreneur the opportunity to play with creative deal structuring techniques. You see, when there aren't a ton of buyers out there queuing up to buy a property for cash, you can pitch a vendor an offer which perhaps uh, offers them a delayed completion, perhaps offers them a purchase lease option, perhaps off offers them an option agreement, uh, all techniques or even vendor financing or joint venturing with the vendor. These are all techniques which allow you to put in less of your money into the deal to make it happen. You see, in a fast market where everyone's talking about property and it's absolute boom, 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 it's actually very hard to be creative. It's actually very hard to use seller financing techniques or suggest a delayed completion to a vendor. Why? Because if you suggest an offer that is complicated to your vendor, there's someone else around the corner with, with cash and they'll just stick it on the table and do the deal next week. In a slow market, that doesn't happen. Think of this simple analogy. You know, you're playing, you're playing throw and catch with someone with a squash ball. That is a fast moving market. The pace of the squash ball, you have to be quick on your feet to catch and throw it back. Now, play throw and catch with a balloon. It's like, playing in slow motion. You never drop a balloon if someone throws it at you, do you? Because it's easy to catch, it's all moving so slowly. It's the same with the property market. In a slow property market, when there's no one uh, competing against you to buy that property under your feet, you've got time to structure an offer, which is a win-win for both you and the vendor. And that often means having to put in less of your own money, and it's a time when people without funds, if they have the skill, can actually play a very, very savvy game. So what's the best opportunity in town for property investors to profit from this recession? Well, here's a little secret about recessions. Commercial properties take a lot longer to recover from recessions than residential properties. Residential properties, uh, the recovery of prices 
is pretty much dependent on recovery of the job market. Commercial properties always lag much further behind. Now here's the thing, unlike any recession before, the government knows that there is an oversupply of many commercial buildings in the UK, such as offices and retail premises. That's why the government have brought in permitted development rights, which allow you to, without the need for complicated planning permissions, basically repurpose dead commercial space into residential usage. So during this recession, you will quite simply be able to acquire uh, distressed and low value commercial pieces of real estate using permitted development rights, in other words, without having to apply for complicated planning permissions, you will be able to transform those commercial properties which are on a slow path to recovery into residential spaces which are on a much faster path to recovery. And that is playing the recession game like you've never been able to play it before. Not only are you picking up distressed assets from motivated sellers at keen prices, but using your knowledge of permitted development rights, you're able to convert those properties into residential usage and thereby put it on a completely different price track, uh, immediately um, uh, uplifting its value and speeding up its overall sort of recovery in the market. Now we've got plenty of videos on this channel about this. If you, I've put some links in the descriptions here and uh, above here on some residential, uh, on some retail and office premises which have been converted under these PD rights, permitted development rights, into commercial spaces. Basically, all you have to do is structure these deals in creative ways using the minimum of your cash, do as many as you can in the next three or four years of opportunity, and then watch as the prices shoot up once the impact of quantitative easing starts to kick in in a few years time. So the missing piece to implement this strategy is obviously the knowledge. Uh, what type of commercial real estate to buy, um, where to find them, uh, how to structure your offers, how to put in creative uh, offers uh, to vendors and how to get them to accept uh, what properties to look for where permitted development rights apply, what are the easiest open goal permitted development right opportunities which are out there, how to actually do these conversions um, successfully and what to convert them into. Now, I've been running a, uh, some training on this for the last few years and this is, this is really a unique opportunity to learn uh, what I feel is the best strategy for the next few years. Uh, I run it as an online uh, workshop. We offer full 90 day support. You can get all the details uh, here, bakerstreetworkshop.com, details on the bottom of the screen. Uh, we're running a very, very special offer on this, actually. Um, I'm going to give you £700 off. All you've got to do is enter the promo code RANJAN, that's R-A-N-J-A-N, at the checkout, and you can claim £700 off uh, the price of this uh, special training. Full details, full agenda, available at bakerstreetworkshop.com. Uh, check it out. And remember, if you look back and think, wasn't it a great time to invest in property in 2009? Well, what are you waiting for? It's 2009 all over again, right now. And you've only got three or four years to fill your boots and uh, make hay while the sun shines. So you can find out all about it, bakerstreetworkshop.com. See you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like, hit the bell icon. Uh, we release new content each and every week. Also comment, tell us what you think about uh, commercial conversions as a strategy uh, to really turbocharge your property investing career. Until the next video, bye for now.